Welcome back to the Gentleman's Gazette and our live stream today all about corduroy pants. Honestly, I'm really excited about it because this took probably two years from testing the initial phases and uh, now we have 14 colors in a really nice heavyweight fabric which is perfect for winter. And uh, I tested about 20 different corduroy fabrics from different mills and different weights and different whales and this was uh, the winner. So yeah, if you have questions, ask along. Um, we also, we have a team that monitors the questions, otherwise too much comes in and I can't reply. They'll actually, there we go, send them to me here so I can answer them. And uh, yeah, I'll just go through and you ask away. By the way, we have a special introductory offer. It's valid until October 20th, end of day, Central Standard Time. It's if you buy one of those uh, beautiful corduroys in the color of your liking, you get two pairs of socks of your choice for free. Now, when we did the photo shoot, I noticed like a lot of the socks look really cool with them. So we wanted to give you the option to choose whatever socks you want. So just add two pairs of socks one pair of corduroys to a card and add the code socks for cords and you will get $80 off which if you get a cotton socks that's two free pairs of cotton socks if you get the silk socks you still get the $80 discount so choose whatever it is that you like personally I think the two-tone socks look really great with these pants um, yeah first question after focusing on accessories for so long why get into pants? Frankly, pants for me personally have always been a really hard thing because I have big thighs and I have a big bum. And so finding something that actually works for me was always challenging, right? So if something fit in the thigh, I had like eight or 10 inches in the waist and you had to add darts and bring it all in and it was all just weird. So because of my build, I was never able to wear flat front pants. That was just not possible. I could only find pleated ones. And if I had those, they would actually um, fit somewhat. And I could make it work with the alterations tailor. So with the pants, I was like, you know, there's nothing like that out there. There are lots of pants out there. And, um, you know, I got a pair of, of cordings and they had like this low rise and they didn't fit at all. And I looked horrible and I was like, you know what, I bet if we created a full cut trouser with a true high rise, which is what I aspire to, I, I think there would be a market for that. And you know, corduroy is something I always loved wearing in the winter because it's warm, it's vibrant, but it's also low maintenance. You know, you don't have to stand there and iron everything. So I was like, man, I think this would be a great addition to our Ford Belvedere lineup. And of course, I didn't want to sell any crap. So I was like, I want this to be the best corduroy pant out there ready to wear that you can get. Um, and to me that meant a really optimized cut. It meant a really nice fabric that would not wear out quickly, that would have vibrant colors and would stand the test of time. And little details that you wouldn't find otherwise in ready to wear trousers. Um, why do we do corduroy trousers and not wool or cotton? Frankly, I looked at the market and was like, you know, there are some corduroy trousers out there, but a lot of them were just not good. You know, I noticed myself the ones I had, they would always wear out in my crotch because I have bigger thighs. But even others, I was like, man, this doesn't even last that long. So what's, what's going on? I also thought about maybe doing chinos. Um, so the plan is to, you know, have chinos, have summer weight pants, all the things that I think are missing or that are a little more unique always focusing on really nice fabrics an unusual cut so we have I think four or five different cuts available for the corduroy pants I decided to go with the flat front and, and with our team we discussed we went back and forth because with a vertical cords it just looks better than with the pleated versions and we'll have pleated versions of things you know if, if the demand is high we may add a lower weight corduroy and a, a super higher weight corduroy um, 
but it's capital intensive to, to launch something like this. And we also want to understand, you know, what sizes do we need to stock? You know, who likes what? So this is our first foray into it, but we have a lot more prototypes already on the way. They're already going. Um, so th there will be other pants. So we're going to go into pants um, seriously, but uh, that means, you know, testing out the waters and then bringing out products lines as we go rather than just dumping 15 different pairs of pants. Um, how do you design the cut of the corduroys? They don't look like others on the market. Yeah, I think what's really obvious is the higher rise. And you know, we, we sometimes it was kind of funny because when you put them on, it feels distinctly different, right? The high rise trousers, they're at your belly button or maybe even a little higher depending on how tall your torso is. And they really hug you there, they stay up. Um, I tested them for over a year and I would never wear them with a belt or any suspenders because I wanted to see how to actually stay up and much better than the ones with a lower rise for me. Then the other thing is that you know, typically when you have ready-to-wear pants, they are scaled, right? So, um, Chris, if you could pull up our size guide so people could see that, that would be really good. So, typically, you know, you start at a standard size and then you define that standard size and then you just scale it up and you scale it down. And at, at first when we had a pattern, you know, like I, I saw a pattern that they started with and it was like, no, I don't like that. Let's revamp it completely. And we worked in a new pattern. And then I said, you know, rather than just scaling it up blindly, it was like, okay, if you have a size, you know, 38 or 40 waist, chances are you're not going to have very skinny legs. So you're going to get a full cut in the leg. But we also decided, you know, we're not going to make the hem opening bigger and bigger and bigger because people with a bigger belly don't have bigger feet. You know, there's a point where it stops and it looks disproportionate. So we kind of capped that so the hem is actually, you know, not getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Same thing at the smaller end, right? If you have a size 30 or 28, oftentimes what happens is as time goes on, these hems get slimmer and slimmer and slimmer. And then people complain like, oh, why do my socks stick to my pants? Well, because they're too slim. That's, that's the way it is. There's nothing you can do other than lining your complete pants back and forth. But that gives a different feeling to the trousers. And so I was like, okay, let's find a good opening where we're not going to go smaller than that because it would just be weird, right? But we also realized if we just take that full cut from a size 30 or 40 and scale it down to 30, right, people like Preston on our team or Jack, they're skinny. Giving them these really full cut trousers makes them feel like more puddly and we didn't want that, but we still wanted a full cut. And uh, so yeah, if you're a person that um, wants a high rise pair of trousers and can't find that, if you want a full cut and you can't find that, definitely check out these. These are not skinny fit pants or slim pants. If you want that, this is not the pant for you. If you want low rise, this is not the pant for you. And uh, yeah. Um, why are they flat fronted? Aren't you all about pleats? Yes, generally I always had to wear pleats. But you know, one of the things that we try to do here is we have these different cuts and we look at the fabric and say, we believe this cut is best with this fabric. So we almost like curate it for you and say, we believe this, the way it is, is ideal for that, right? So uh, corduroy to me is a bit more on the casual side, right? It's not formal. So we didn't add suspender buttons, we added belt loops. And we made sure the belt loops were big enough so you can accommodate a belt that is, I think, 43 millimeters, around 1.75 inches wide. So you could even have a more casual belt wear with it, right? So we, we, we thought of it that way. How would you wear it? What would you wear it with? What are we going to do? And the flat front just looked nicest without the pleat. So that's why we went with it. But the good thing is, even if you normally only wear pleated pants because you need to size in your thighs, with these, you don't have to worry about that. They're going to be roomy enough, especially in the sizes, in you know, the larger sizes, 36, 34. Starting in like, I think 34 and 32, 30, 28, we're slimming it down. But in the bigger sizes, you get, you get that. 
And no, even under slimmer sizes, it's not a super slim fit, like what you get at H&M or like Suit Supply or whatever. No, 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 you still have some volume there. But of course, we chose a fabric that was heavy enough to give you um, that volume. Also, you know, when I, I started out, I thought I had um, these really cool pants made here in a super heavy fabric. And you know, before I wore them, I was like, this is gonna be my favorite, this is gonna be my favorite. And then I wore them for a while and it was like, ooh. So this one, the heavier one, it was just stiffer. It was heavier, of course, so it was warmer, but also when I walked, you know, it, it almost was like there was resistance in every step and I would feel them in every step. And I was like, you know, I don't like it as much. So we went down in weight a little bit with a slightly different finish and all of a sudden it was like velvety smooth, luxuriously soft. It was still thick, but not too kind of stiff and uncomfortable to walk in. So yeah, so this one, maybe if, if there's enough demand, we, we would bring that eventually in, in like a smaller run. But I think a lot fewer people will like this than they will like the ones we actually chose. Um, what makes these pants worth $295? No, well, it, it's an interesting thing because, you know, c people think of cotton as a more inexpensive material. You can find it at Target or, you know, department stores and they think of cotton equals cheap. Now, the way corduroy fabric is made, and I've seen several factories, is that you basically have two layers of backing and then you get the threads up and down like this. And then when you're done, you take a knife and cut them apart in between. So you end up with two layers of velvet and then you cut in the ridges. During this entire process, you also have to finish it in various ways. And the finishing is done with natural gas. So when the Ukraine war started, the price for cotton corduroy or velvet went up like crazy because the way these factories were built. If you had a regular cotton chino, for example, that wasn't the case. So um, that's just something that people don't, don't realize, right? So first of all, we chose a very high quality fabric. So, you know, you have a lot of warp threads per inch, which makes it more cumbersome to set up for weaving, but it leads to a much tighter fabric which means it will last longer. So these pants, for example, are rated as 20,000 double rubs. The heavier ones I showed you before, they're even rated at 40,000 double rubs. What does that mean? When you take it and you rub it 20,000 times like this, that's when the fabric will start wearing out. This kind of a rating of 20,000 is considered to be heavy duty in the furniture industry. 40,000 is even higher rating, but um, again, because of the heavier weight and the overall feel and the smoothness and the luster, we went with this fabric instead. The price wasn't that much different, but um, I thought this one was really superior. So I think th that, is, that is one thing, right? And then on top of that, it's of course the cut that is different and the entire thought that went into testing, into designing. This is not a pair of pants you can find elsewhere. If you want a comparable fabric, you have to go made to measure and uh, that's quite a bit more expensive because when you do made to measure lengths, you know, your, your fabric cost doubles, right? Then your manufacturing cost goes up. So it's a lot more expensive and also, the way we look at it, you know, cost per wear, if you can wear these pair of pants for 10 years or 15 years and you get a lot of wear out of them, your cost per wear really goes down. And when we design products here, you know, we don't say, we want these pair of pants to cost $120. That's not at all the approach, right? We go out and we look at the best fabric and say, this really gets us excited. This is what we truly would like for ourselves. And then we design it and everything. And then at the end, we decide what the price is going to be. So we're not limiting ourselves or going like price driven to cut corners, no. We, we didn't cut any corners here. We just went there and you know, quality has its price. 
but cost per wear is actually much lower than if you get a less expensive pair of corduroys. What is whale and why did you pick eight whale for these trousers? So if you look at the trousers here, and I don't have a measuring tape right now, but if you take one inch or two and a half centimeters, you basically have eight ridges, which makes it an eight whale. So over here, for example, if you compare this one, you clearly see the ridges are wider. So this is a five whale. But not only are the ridges wider in the sense, you know, it's also woven in a less dense way, for example. So even though it's wider whale, it's much lighter, for example, than this one. You can also have this kind of whale, which is a, this one is a 10 whale, meaning 10 ribs, per two and a half centimeters or one inch. And this is a 12 whale. I think the eight whale, in, in my mind, which is this, um, this one here, it was the kind of best of both worlds. It's different than like department store stuff you see, right? It's different than lower end brands. It's a little wider. It works well with striped shirts, with checked shirts, with tweed jackets. It, it just, to me, had this, really good balance between wide and slim. Because my wife on the white ones, when I would wear them, she's like, man, you look like a grandma sofa, right? I was like, no, that's not the look we're going for. We're going for kind of a timeless classic look and the eight whale was what we settled on. Okay, double rub. I think I explained it, right? If you rub many times, it's, it's something that they use for all sorts of fabrics. You see it in socks and uh, you see it in in, in uh, upholstery fabric. So it's a very kind of common standard that is applied to fabrics to just see how long they last. So the higher the number, the longer they're gonna um, last. Um, what are some of your favorite colors among the 14 shades that you're offering? Yeah, you know, we could have just offered like a navy, you know, a kind of brown, a maybe, you know, camel, and maybe some dark olive. That's what you see most um, corduroy colors in. I like the bolder colors because you can really create or build an entire outfit around it, right? And so I like choice. I wanted to offer a bit of a variety without having, you know, bright pink, right? So these colors were things that I would all wear myself. And it's a bit, it depends on the mood, right? If I wear this like garnet red here, for example, I'm going to tone down the rest of the outfit, right? Maybe you have a navy blazer, maybe something blue. Because if you, if you wear something bold with this, it's like over the top, right? If I'm wearing something like this here, which is the khaki drab, then I would, um, I would you know, maybe go with like more earthy tones and they, they, they would look really well together. So I, I knew that, you know, this was a very different pair of trousers for someone who's not run of the mill, you know. If you're even considering these trousers, you're not buying your stuff at Costco or at Walmart. You want something different. You want something that is, you know, warm and cozy in the winter, that is really pleasant to wear on your skin, right? You want something that is thought through and well designed that will last for a while. And chances are you have a certain sense of individual style. So, you know, maybe you want just a navy blue, but maybe, you know, a lighter shade of blue or this azure blue, or I wanted to give you options and also allow you to you know, maybe not just buy one pair of pants, but buy three or five or 14 for that matter. And um, yeah, that's how we ended up with that, right? We, I mean, the sky's the limit. You can custom color these and there's a lot what you can do, but um, it also has to be, you know, economical in a way. And if you order sometimes a hundred colors, you know, people are like, uh, I don't know which shade of camel I should pick. So maybe I don't choose any, right? And we wanted to prevent that too. Um, why are there two buttons at the waistband? Okay. So what they're referring to is, is the waistband here, right? And um, in recent years in the bespoke world, what has happened is that the waistband has gradually gotten bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. So sometimes it's, you know, three inches or eight centimeters wide, and that's quite a bit. So I wanted a waistband that was 
higher than you know, a normal waistband on like, I don't know, polar off Lauren pair corduroys or like LL Bean sort of, right? But something that would still work with a belt because if you make the waistband bigger and bigger and bigger, well, your belt is all of a sudden really slim and it looks odd with a belt loops then. So that's why we decided on that. And we just wanted to be different, you know, two buttons, you know, holds better than one. We also have a hook on the inside. We didn't go with two hooks because we had a prototype with it, but actually using it was more cumbersome. So we decided to just put one hook in there. And then we have what is called like the French bearer. So you have this extra button here that's all reinforced. And you know, when it's closed, and even if you leave your fly open, right, it's still like covering it here in an extra way. And then um, we were looking at, you know, button flies and zip flies. There was a time which was kind of funny, you know, when I got into clothing and I learned that there was such a thing as button flies, I was like, ooh, I want button flies because most flies are zip flies. And then over time, you know, I learned that the um, Duke of Windsor, you know, he actually went away from button flies to zip flies because they were more convenient. And so I took a step back and said like, what is actually better? What is easier to use? What is more functional? It is definitely the zip fly. Because with the button fly, sometimes you button it and the button comes undone and the button comes off. So I was like, no, we're gonna do a zip fly because it's actually easier to use. And when you look at the fly, you can see how long it is compared to a regular pair of trousers. It's really much longer. And that's because we have that higher rise. Um, why are some of the buttons horn and some of them are corrozo? So, you know, natural horn that is undyed comes just in a range of shades, right? They come in dark ones. And also the pricing for, you know, the light blonde colored horn buttons has gone up astronomically and the supply chain is not as consistent. So you may get differences from batch to batch. So horn buttons are much more limited in its variety. Um, and then Corozo buttons are basically, they come in any type of color you want. And it's, it's a natural material, you know, it's not a synthetic. And um, so that's why we chose to have some Corozo buttons with, just because of a color thing, because we don't want them to be super contrasty. I think on the, our red ones here, um, you know, that's one of the few ones where you have a strong contrast because we felt like that just looked good and different. And if you wear a red pair of pants, you know, you're, not, you're not concerned about um, being too bold. You know, you know that it's a bold color, you're just gonna go with it. But uh, yeah, we want you know, natural materials, good materials, not something that breaks. And that's why we chose real Corozo and a genuine horn, no imitation stuff. Can I wear these with suspenders or braces? You know, f stylistically, normally pants, if they have belt loops, you don't put on braces. That being said, we tailored everything here that if you really want to, you can have the belt loops removed and you can have buttons placed on the inside. You need six buttons and then you can wear them with suspenders. But off the bat, you know, they come, the waistband is smooth, so there are no buttons on the inside. These are meant to be worn with a belt or without anything. We have a different model in the lineup, you know, that comes, it's made for suspenders, for side adjusters, no belt loops. But um, yeah, for these, we felt the, the belt option was better. Um, yeah, do I have to use a belt loops? No, you don't. Um, where did you get the name Stancliff? So Fort Belvedere, you know, is the name of a British country house. So we were like, well, in, in, in that vein, you know, can we stay, can we stay there? Also the fabric, you know, it is made in Italy. But in terms of fabric specifications, we went more for a British style, you know, high warp. This is kind of top of the line corduroy. You know, you're not gonna find anything better than that. But the vision was, you know, you're in that British country estate, you know, with your tweed jacket and your corduroys. And so we felt like having the, uh, the, uh, the name of, of a country house um, that's evocative of that whole feel would be very befitting. And that's how we ended up with Stancliff. Um, will there be a launch discount? Yes, there is. Socks for cords gets you a pair of corduroys and two free pair of socks that are cotton or $80 off any pairs of socks you want. So buy one pair at $2.95, get $80 off. You just add your socks to the card, you add the pants to your card, and then there's socks for cords. Also, we have a 
permanent volume discount because you know when you buy two or three or more pants for us the cost goes down significantly because rather than shipping you know four or five packages or ten we can just ship one right the packing fees the logistics everything goes down so we want to pass on savings to you and make it more attractive for you to buy in bulk so as you add things to your cart, you don't need any coupon for that. You just add your pants to your cart, and you have two, or you have three, four, or five. And as you go up, you'll get a bigger discount. So buy more, save more. Very classic approach. Now, if you do this, the socks for cords will not work anymore, simply because technically with a coupon level, that's not possible. But uh, you, you, get a, you get a great deal either way and we already had some people you know they already ordered eight of them so cool we want to give you a discount for that um, are you planning to have a jacket shirt suits etc soon you know soon is is, is is hard to say because developing something like this in a thoughtful way especially if you develop the fabric you know you have to test it you have to say oh I like the weight I like the weave I like the finish but then maybe there's a pulling thread and you don't like that so Soon would be, you know, too much. We've, we've worked on jackets, we've done some prototyping, um, we've prototyped other things. We'll have a bunch um, up our sleeves, um, so, so we'll have more leather goods, we'll have more cologne, so that's something that'll be coming um, if, you know, the, the pants sell as well as we anticipate, then we will also have more pants coming, you know, different summer pants, and other pants so um, stay tuned for that but the goal is you know, that we offer something that is has a broad color range has a really good fabric has really good details and that you can wear for years to come that's always going to be the prerogative and um, with jackets you know it's it's more complicated because if we do something we're only going to do full canvas i'm not going to do half canvas stuff or you know glues that no thank you it would all it will all be high-end stuff but then how do you tailor it so you know there's still enough fabric reserve so you can change it? Um, we'll see. What's a little pocket for at the front of the pants? This one here? I mean, frankly, it's more decorative, I would say, but it, it's functional, right? It's, it's called traditionally a ticket pocket, but you can put your keys in there or, you know, something little. Um, it's, yeah, you can use it, but most people will not use it. What we did for usability for smaller items, in the pants, um, we actually added, now I'll pull out the pants lining so you can see it. There's a little extra pocket in here, a little pocket, so you have coins or you have, you know, a pair of keys or something like that. Having it inside a smaller compartment makes it rattle less and also, it, it's better for the silhouette to look at it. So I'm a big fan of these pocket and pocket styles. So we, we have that in all of our side pockets, left and right. So and then we have the pockets in the back on both sides um, that you can button. So yeah, you have plenty of pocket options here with, with these Stan Cliff pants from Fort Belvedere. Um, how practical are these pants? Can I store lots of things in them? Yes, as I said, you can actually store quite a bit in them. Um, when we chose the fabric, one thing in practicality that was really important to me was how labor intensive is this fabric? Because when we tested fabrics, you know, we had stuff like Chino fabric. I mean, you wash them and you know, let them dry. They looked horrible. They needed to be ironed, but then even if you wore them, if you sat down, they looked horrible. They looked like wrinkly and I was like, no, we're not going to do that. So. For example, you know, let me show you here. This is a pair of pants that you know, is, is ironed, right? Washed and ironed, and this is what it looks like. This pair of pants, same fabric. This is washed out of the washing machine. And uh, this has been washed many, many times. So you see that the finish is slightly different maybe, but it's ultimately something that I'd be comfortable wearing right at the washing machine and dried. So that was 
huge for me on practicality. Because if you think about, you know, yes, the pants cost $295 if you buy one pair. Yes, you get a discount on the socks with socks for cords. But how much time would you spend ironing your pants or maybe pay the dry cleaner to have them ironed, right? And that is, I think, a really good selling point here because these pants, yes, will they look better if you iron them? And if you iron them, iron them inside out. So you iron them from this side here, not from this side. It will be better for the cords and the longevity. But um, yeah, how much, if, even if it takes you just like, you know, 10 minutes to iron your pants, um, what is your time worth? You know, how often do you, do you iron them? And it's probably gonna take more like 20 minutes or 15 minutes. So what does that cost and how does it add up over time? And how nice is it not having to iron something when you're in a hurry? To me, that's, that's huge. So that's the biggest practicality aspect of these pants, I think. Um, what colors can I pair with burgundy corduroy pants? We have an entire video about color matching, but um, you know, burgundy, the closest thing to burgundy we have is what we call like this maroon here, for example. I think it looks particularly nice with, you know, navy, but even like if you have something like cream, you know, blues look good. I would maybe stay away from like green tones with it unless you're kind of in a Christmassy mood. It can get, give up that vibe. But I mean, even like look at the gold together, right? That's like a pretty good combination. I think the Minnesota Gophers have that color combination. That's something I would do. Earth tones, you know, beiges, um, taupes, I think work really nice with that too. What is your opinion of mixing quarter slacks with a camel hair blazer? Would you mix these fabrics? Yes, I, I think, you know, a camel hair, and I, I have a jacket here. I'm, uh, not up here right now, otherwise I'd show it. It has more of a fuzzy texture, a bit more of a, a bit more like velvet, but not quite. But yes, it absolutely works with it because it's different, you know. I wouldn't pair like a seersucker jacket with it or something else that has a stripe that is similar to the width of the cords. I think that would just look bad. Um, but otherwise, mixing fabrics, absolutely, especially with corduroy, you know. Um, yes, you can get corduroy suits, but very rarely do you see like, you know, three-piece corduroy suits. All of my corduroys, when I wear them, I pair them, you know, with a sweater, like I'm doing now. You can wear them with a vest, you know, it could be a tweed vest, could be like wool vest, could be cotton or linen vest. Or I wear them, you know, yeah, with a, with a jacket, sport coat, tweed coat. That's all in that realm. I think when we took the photos of this one, I was wearing it with kind of a really nice a navy with a white window pane. Uh, I think it looked really cool. How do this compare to Cordis Recordings or our brands as far as weight, for example? You know, I, I've seen the ones um, from Cordings. They, they have a nice fabric too. I, I like their fabric. Um, what I really dislike about them is their cut. And that's where they're very different, right? Cordings is like low rise. This is high rise. Cordings is much slimmer fit in the thighs, but then wider at the hem. So, you know, if that's something you want, I'd say go for cordings. Cordings by default come with a button fly. Ours come with a zip fly. You can upgrade and pay extra for a zip fly, so they do that for you. Um, I think both of our pants come unhemmed. Um, what we do here for the Belvedere ones, they all come with a 38 inch inseam, so that accommodates everyone. And then, you know, you have to bring these to your tailor and adjust the height. But that allows you to add the cuff that you want, or you can go unhemmed and you can get it exactly the length that you like. Maybe your left leg is different than your right one. And we also know that, you know, everyone who's really into gentlemen's because that Fort Belvedere, they care about their clothes. They know that you have to tailor them anyways. And so because of that, what we did was we, we added quite a bit of a fabric reserve, right? So this is the size 30 inch, you know, um, and you have a solid like three inches, you know, seven and a half centimeters of fabric reserve in the waist and then it tapers down a little bit it tapers down a little bit just because of the tailoring and in the leg you have i think it's yeah it's about like one and a half inches in there in each leg so you can truly tailor these in all the way shapes or form and we know that when you buy these pants you're going to go to the alterations tailor or you do it yourself and you hem it but changing the waist and changing the hem it's it's very similar work. So if you're at the alterations tailor anyways, you want to get them fitted perfectly for you. Now, um, 
You know, when it comes to sizing, one thing to keep in mind is, and, and we notice that even, you know, in our office, like our, our cameraman Graham, you know, he's like, oh, I have 34 pants. I'm going to get 34 pants. Well, these fans, pants didn't fit him because they were much tighter. Why is that? Well, you know, most um, sizing these days is vanity sizing, meaning if it says it's a 34, 34, which would mean a 34 inch waist, it's actually a 37, sometimes a 38 inch, right? So people feel a little better buying the smaller sizes. What we did, we have actually true sizing. So if it's a size 30, right? And if you measure all the way around, it's gonna be 30 and the half, it's 15. And our size chart is like that. It's, it's all just, you know, if you measure, this is size 30, this is like 15 or 15.1 inches. It's also a thicker fabric, so it's gonna be tighter, right? So when in doubt, I would say always size up. Plus, because they're sitting much higher, you know, like this is, for example, these are my pants here. My belly button is here. Right? Other pants, they sit down here. So if you wear your pants down here and you have a more pronounced belly, well, down here you have a smaller circumference than, uh, than up here. So that's also something to keep in mind. Right? What, what does your physique look like? Uh, is your stomach flat or do you have more of a kind of pronounced midsection? And if you have more pronounced midsection, you're going to uh, more likely or it's better to size up. And so for sizing, you know, and we, we, we described it in detail, like you can start by measuring your pants that you have, your existing pants, and you can assess, are these high-rise pants? Are they not? If they're not, when in doubt, just take one size up. And again, there is a lot of fabric in here too where you can adjust it. And that's a good thing, right? You can adjust, um, you can take them in, you can make them bigger. So there is some leeway in there. So keep, keep that in mind, that is good. But um, we also provided you know, very specific instructions on how you can measure the thigh and you can compare to existing pants that you have at home. So take a measuring tape and just see what you can expect. You know, oh, are they gonna be wider? Okay, they're gonna be wider here. This is gonna be this, for that size it's gonna be that. So you can truly compare what you get before you buy them. Which color is the best to start with? Well, that depends a bit on the rest of the things that you have in your wardrobe because it's hard to tell, right? I, I think most people, when they would start, they would probably start with something like a navy blue, like this, right? Or because they wear them in the winter with more like of a brown tone. So it could be something like this kind of more dark brown or it could be something like this cognac, right? This taupe or this, um, this camel color. I think I like the camel a lot and the cognac. These are good places to start. But um, I also like, you know, I'm, I'm wearing the um, sage green ones, as you just saw. I think that they're very nice. Um, I think the British racing green is really nice. And the golden rod yellow, I mean, that's, that is something. And then the azure blue and the garnet red are a little bolder. Maroon is also a nice one khaki drab. If you'd ask me like what do you think your best sellers are going to be, I would guess maybe like the navy, maybe this khaki drab, and then one of the, the browner tones. Um, how are the buttonholes finished? Any handmade details? You know that was something because typically when when I personally was kind of a close aficionado, I was interested in, in that, right? And so when you go to a factory, um, and, and, and you talk to them, you know, and you're like, oh, can, can you do that, right? And uh, they're like, yes, we can if you order one pair of pants. If you order, you know, two, three thousand or more pair of pants, they said we absolutely cannot because we do not have the staff to make these buttonholes and get them out here in an adequate time. It's simply not possible on an industrial level. And they're like, if you really wanted to, you know, we'd have to kind of find extra people and you'd have to wait much longer and we would charge you a lot more for it. So we decided to go with their machine made buttonholes, um, which are not the most beautiful buttonholes in the world, you know, I admit, but I've tested them. They, they work well. What we did do is, you know, we got nice shanks on the buttons, so they're a little wider and, you know, they they're very kind of smooth and buttonable and you don't get these thick wrinkles because everything is too tight. 
So that's, that's something that we did. But um, yes, it is not a bespoke level buttonhole. Does Ford Rebel Airship internationally? Yes, we do. And I think that we even have free shipping thresholds, but you need to buy, I think, more than $325 to get that. I like them. I'm going to order a pair. What is the anticipated delivery time to the East Coast US? You know, all of these pants are in stock right now. So you can go to our website, put them in your cart. There's a little estimator. So you put in your zip code and it tells you what the estimate is, right? So today is Friday. You know, if you order today, it's not going to ship until Tuesday probably and then whatever shipping time the carrier needs. So I would guess, you know, East Coast, you'd probably have them by the end of next week if, you know, everything goes uh, normal. But uh, type in your zip code and just check and that, that works everywhere. Um, yeah, so keep in mind, we have this special going on just today through October 20th. It's buy a pair of corduroys, they cost $295, and get add two pairs of socks and get an $80 off. If you take two cotton socks, that means you get two free pairs of socks. If you have silk socks, you get just get $80 off. So you get an $80 value when you buy these pants. Um, that's a pretty good deal. If you want to buy more than one pair of pants, then as you add more to your cart, you'll get a bigger discount. Buy more, save more. And just add whatever you like and the discount will adjust and you can see it right in your cart. Um, okay, are there any other um, pants questions people have? Okay, I'll... I'll just go back to pants if people are interested in. And then, yeah, Belvedere Bash. So we're having our first in-person event here in Minneapolis, October 27th, 28th. We'll, of course, bring out, you know, a size run of, of these pants and all the colors. So you can see the colors. You can see that you can try things on and make sure it all fits. Um, we'll, we'll do some, you know, workshops. You, you can smell colognes. We'll do some... Uh, shoe polishing stuff like Amara Hark Weber will be leading a workshop. It'll be a lot of fun, so it it should be it should be a, a good kind of thing. Um, what can I expect at the event? Yeah, it's you know we have different dress codes, right? So first night is cocktail attire. Preston is going to sing. We have a really cool space. Our team will take lots of photos. We'll have a really good ambiance, and uh, then. You know, we'll have more kind of British country style inspired dress code. And then we have black and white tie. So bring all your clothes, you know, shoe shine, learn from, from us. We had, I think, um, two more VIP tickets available. So with that, you know, you will have dinner in my house uh, with a select group of people. I think we're going to be 12 total. And, you know, I'll give you a tour of my closet and we'll talk and have a good time. You'll also get like a gift card, I think, for 300 bucks and uh, for um, stuff from the shop. So yeah, we'll have, you know, cocktail hours and uh, it's gonna be fun. What sort of clothing will you be wearing to the cocktail evening? I'm looking for inspiration. Frankly, you know, I haven't even thought about it. I'm not the kind of person who's like, you know, planning the outfits like three weeks in advance. Now, especially with my new closet, it's nice. You can just go and it's everything there. And then it's a bit like the mood and what I want to wear that day. And then, you know, I look at my tie wall and say, well, maybe, you know, I like this, this and that. And I'll, I'll, I'll put it together. So I haven't even thought about it. Um, but if you're curious about what does cocktail is, how you mean, and, you know, what could it be? We did, we have a video for that. We actually have two videos on that. So check out the post on the website just to get some inspiration of what that could be. And, uh, but you know, this is also, this is not about, this is a place where everyone is like a clothes enthusiast, right? This is not some like regular event where there may be one well-dressed person. Everyone here is gonna be well-dressed. So you decide what you want to wear and how you want to be different or how you want to highlight your style. What is the dress code for Saturday afternoon? Yeah, we call it autumnal English countryside. You know, like you could wear corduroys, you could wear tweed, uh, you know, you could wear your plus fours if you want, or not, you could wear chinos. You know, it's like, I, I get it, not everyone has plus fours, right? So 
But if you do, this is a great opportunity to wear them. If, if not, well, wear something else. You know, it could be a combination. It could be a, a more casual suit, whatever um, it is that kind of floats your boat. I don't have a black or white hair ensemble, but would love to attend a gala. Can I come in my most formal suit? Yes, you can. Um, no, if you don't have black tie right now, that's cool. Just wear what you have come as you are. Um, will we get to spend time with all of the gentlemen because I've seen? Yes, this is going to be a small event. You know, they're going to be probably 50 people, maybe a little less, and uh, you will have a chance to you know talk to me, talk to everyone else. We'll have a nice lounge seating that encourages conversation, and uh, yeah, so you can you know learn from people, learn about their outfits, learn what they do. Um, learn about where they buy, what brands, what not, like, th there's going to be a lot of, of, of that. Are there any VIP tickets left? Yes, two. There were two left. So hurry up. If you already bought a regular ticket, I think you can also upgrade. Um, just reach out to customer service about that. Are ladies allowed? Yes. Yes, you are. If you have an interest in classic men's clothing, please, please come. There's also companion tickets. Um, so, you know, if, if a lady is interested in men's clothing and she wants to bring her husband as a guest, whatever. It all, it all works. This is about your interest, not about how you were born. The blade is standing yes for longer. What menswear things can I do before or after the event? Okay, there's actually a bunch of cool menswear stores in town. There's cool art museums. The menswear stores are, you know, Martin Patrick III. They um, have an interior design background, so it's really cool. Um, Jaime's haberdashery, you know, they have a nice barber shop. It's more kind of evocative of the 1930s take on things. Um, there's lots of vintage stores here. So, you know, Lula's vintage, Golden Pro vintage. And we'll put together a list of all the things you can, you can do here. There's also the Minneapolis Institute of Art, you know, that's free. There's the Walker Art Museum, for example. Um, so, there may be like some, some orchestra music going on. There's Quite a bit to do here. There's also a good food scene, so we can guide you in the right directions for, for food. Uh, my wife and I were big foodies. Um, we're you know business partners, and we like we like antique shopping. So there's some good stores for that. Um, so we'll 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 let you know. Like uh, I would say the best um, place in town to shop for like antiques is H and B Gallery. It's actually not not far from us here at all, so I can point you there. Um, what is the weather to really like in Minneapolis for late October? Frankly, you know, it could be like 50s or 60s, sometimes even warmer, or it could be snowing. So I'd wait until, you know, we're a little closer to make a definitive prediction. Because if I say something now, it's guaranteed to be wrong. Do you have a Facebook group or event page for Leather Rush? Yes, we have both. So if you sign up for a ticket, sign up to the group, you get to know the other peers who are going to be there. We're going to have um, little thing, so definitely sign up there, you know, introduce yourself, get to know the others. So when you show up, you actually see some familiar faces. Um, is the bash close and feel too pity warm or influential? I would say neither. It's much more personal, right? It's, it's more like a nice kind of dinner party feel. We have this nice backdrop. PT Uomo, you know, is, is very showy. There's lots of photography going on, and we'll definitely have that. But we also have, you know, like, proper flash setup so you get a really nice picture that you can then um, take home and influential you know was more about I would say if you wanted to start a business in a way and it was bigger and it was louder and I think you know it wasn't so much about the dress code and what you wear so this is going to be different here what's a good shoe style to pair with cords um, I think boots are awesome with it. When we did the photo shoot, you know, I wore a lot of loafers because they were easy and quick to get in and out of. And I, I like the look because you, know, you see obviously more of your socks. And uh, I also would wear like a Derby shoe or like an, an Oxford. But if you want that typical, you know, autumnal feel, I think boots are really nice. You know, heavy soled brogues um, could be in suede, you know, or it could be like in just box calf leather, I think that would look really cool. Um, did you choose how the thread will lay laying down towards the shoe or laying upwards towards the waist? Some cords give a totally different look depending, yes. I mean, the worst thing you can do and what that refers to is like, you know, 
if you go down this way, right? If you go down this way in our, our pants, it's smooth. If you go up, you feel a bit of resistance. But because this is very densely woven, you see there's not visually that much of a difference. And it's also, if you look at it, the angle, right? if you look at it from this angle with, with how the light goes versus this, it, it changes. So sometimes when you look down on yourself, it may look very different than someone else looking at you. But we did it in a way that, you know, it's smooth as you go down and there's more resistance when you go up. And we did it all the way throughout the front and the back. Sometimes on cheaper pants, you know, there may be different areas where it's up and down and it looks really weird. So that's the biggest thing to kind of avoid. Um, I'm new to corduroy. Are these machine washable? Great questions. Yes, they're absolutely machine washable. Like we wanted something that, you know, is practical in everyday life because what's the point, you know, I can sell you a pair of pants for $10, but then if you have to spend like $30 every time you wear them because they didn't bring a dry cleaner, that's pointless. No, these are machine washable, you know, at, you know, 30 degrees Celsius, that's 86 degrees Fahrenheit, you know, that's, that's warm. You can iron them, we suggest iron them inside out. Um, yeah, in, in the cotton setting. You can, you know, dry clean them with care. I wouldn't put them in the dryer. Um, if you, for some reason, feel very attached to the dryer, maybe put them in just for a very little bit. But you know, everything you put in your dryer is going to shorten the lifespan of your garment. So mentally, you basically have to say, when you put things in your dryer, I don't care about you. I don't care about you. I don't care about you. So if that's you, if you don't care about your clothes and you, know, you just buy new stuff, by all means, just put it in the dryer. But if you do care about your clothes, the dryer is not your friend. Um, yeah, so then um, I think we did a little video that also shows the features of those pants. I think, uh, Chris, if you could play that, or do you think it's not going to work? We'll play it without sound. Okay. Well, oh, play without the sound. Mm -hmm. Well, in that case, I mean, yeah, we can play it a little bit, but you know, I'm not seeing it as, as it's being played. So I'll say something else, but you can also check it out on our product pages. Right now the video is embedded. We'll also publish it later on our Fort Belvedere YouTube channel. But on the, on the General Gazette shop pages, if you go in there, you can actually watch the video without sound. It just you know, walks you through all the features and what's in there. Um, socks for cords is the coupon code that gives you two pair of free socks with purchase of one pair of corduroys. You can put this in the card and uh, put the two socks in, put the corduroys in, put the, the promotional code socks for cords. No matter it's lowercase or uppercase, it should work. And, and you can check out if you want to buy more cords. We have a volume discount available. Um, so just add the cords to your card and see how you save more when you buy more. Yeah, if there are any other questions, I'm happy to, to answer them. I think we're five minutes to 1 p.m. Um, yeah. Anything? Are, are, you, are you playing a video right now? Okay. Yeah, so people can, you can just check it out. That's pretty good. All right. Since there don't seem to be any more questions, I would say let's wrap it up. Thanks for joining in. If you know there's any other questions you may have, just reach out. We have chat or contact at gentlemanscazette.com. We're happy to answer any and all your questions. Also, keep in mind, you know, we have a very lenient return policy. If, if you buy them and you realize it's not right, you know, you can return them and we'll find you the right size. Of course, you know, all of that costs a lot of money, right? If we ship stuff back and forth. So we'd really appreciate it if you would take the time measuring to measuring for the right size. Um, that would really help us out. Um, but rest assured, you know, we, we, we got you covered. We're not going to let you be with, with a size that's not going to work for you. Of course, you know, if you, if you alter the trousers, we, we can't take them back. So they have to be in original resellable condition. But that should go without saying, but you know, you never know these days. But uh, yeah, 
rest assured, you're gonna buy a quality pair of corduroys that you can wear for years to come. And uh, yeah, I'm really curious to learn about what you think about them. Share in the comments. Like I said, this was like two years of work. So it's a, it's a labor of love. I really enjoyed it and I look forward to doing more of it. Maybe one more thing that I'd like to highlight is, and I'm proud of that because it's not something that you see a whole lot, is we did on the inside So, let me pull them inside out. So, this is the inside now. So, you can see, you know, this is all, we all went with 100% cotton linings. And some are black and others are white. But then in here, in the front, you know, we, we have this kind of crotch lining that is covering up the area where all the fabric meets so that it's you know comfortable, you don't feel it. And then also in the legs, we added a little bit of this kind of lining here in the thighs, which is an acetate fabric. It's very smooth. And with that, you know, it's supposed to prevent wearing corduroys out right here in that area. That's where you typically my corduroys wear out, right in this area. This is right in between the crotch. And this lining here from the inside is going to prevent that. That's also something you're not gonna find in other trousers. And we had other little details, you know, we add, for example, a little like loop in the back here. So let's say you're at the gym or somewhere, you know, you can, you can hang it, you can hang everything, you can hang your pants like that. Of course, on the inside out, you'd hang them like, like this way, you just hang them, and that way they can still hang, or you can fold them, whatever floats your boat. It all, it all works. But yeah, little details, is where we put a lot of thought into, just so you end up with a product that you really enjoy. And that's practical. Awesome. I think let's wrap it up then if there are no more questions. Have a wonderful weekend and uh, let me know which color is your favorite. Thank you.